cool. Yeah, I think I think we can um, we can kick it off, Asif. Um, so yeah, just for a bit of context, um, you know, we're having a, a series of AMAs um, with all of our partners um, as part of our one year anniversary. Um, so it's really great to have you here today. Um, it would be awesome if we could just get a little bit of an intro from you, Asif, about what you do at Polygon. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, then I just didn't realize that it's been one year for Stake Talk. Uh, uh, it's 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 a bit weird, <laughs> if you may say. Uh, but yeah, just just a small quick intro about myself. So hey, everyone, uh, I'm Asif, and I lead Polygon DeFi growth efforts specifically. So a lot of that would be around setting the major strategies, the core themes, uh, which we want to execute upon in DeFi space, uh, and yeah, upon the business development side as well, uh, just making sure that we have a healthy organic ecosystem. Uh, and yeah, just finding ways to make sure that happens. Please to be here. Thanks, guys, for uh, inviting me here. Yeah, amazing. Um, it's, it's great to have you here. You know, um, Polygon is is um, of course one of um, you know um, our closest partners. Um, I would happily say so. Um, it's it's really great to have you here. So um, you know, I think you know briefly we, we can just have a bit of a look back at some of the things we've we've built together. Um, so you know we we kicked it off with our um, passive USD strategy on Polygon. Um, we've had that around for quite some time um nine months or something like that plus i think um we also have uh stt our governance token as well as uh staked stt on uh on polygon um so yeah what um what are some of the things that you're focused on for this year as if at polygon Oh, right off the start, a uh, big one. Uh, big. Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, so I think majorly would say that there would be three to four uh, core themes that we we are really focused upon. So first of all, capital efficiency uh, on the taxes and on the yield side, yield aggregators. Also, would be one really big theme. Um, so, if you people are aware, so Uniswap V3 is live, and organically, it is it is doing a lot of volume, around 70, 80 million daily. Uh, that too on a TVL of like 70, 80, and we feel that in in coming days, we'll also be rolling out a liquidity mining campaign for Uniswap V3. So, because of concentrated liquidity there, people can have really high organic APYs deriving from the fees. And I think one uh, major theme we are definitely seeing in DeFi is that yields are somewhat falling down uh, from the highs of maybe DeFi summer or even the L1 summer we had uh, around August, September. Uh, there's only so much emissions you can do for native tokens. Uh, there's only so much cost of liquidity your community can bear. And I think those effects are now being seen. So so searching for real yield sources is definitely one bigger theme. Uh, in crypto, of course, there's a big demand for leverage. And when there's leverage, there's, there's some amount of yield that the people who are willing to leverage are ready to pay. I think that is also a one sector we would be pretty much uh, very interested in because that also essentially gives yield strategists like StakeDAO to build new strategies upon wherein some people could be the LP side, uh, wherein they could essentially sort of loan their assets for people who want to leverage. Uh, and yeah, they they can earn pretty much really high APYs uh, just by trading fees. Interesting. So 
just so I understand correctly, are you talking about sort of similar to some of the leveraged yield farming solutions out there or kind of a new there's, architecture there's, that you guys are going to do? There's, there's a couple of things. So, yeah, I mean, there's this conventional uh, leveraged yield farming, of course, uh, where, of course, you get the yield by selling the emission token. But here I'm I'm talking more about uh, platforms where you can essentially put your assets uh, in a pool, and then that asset is used by the person who is who is leveraging upon uh, to trade. So one such platform is Gains uh, Gains dot Trade G Trade. I don't know if you people have heard about it. So they essentially give people the opportunity to stake DAI. And that DAI is used to buy their native token gains. And that basically adds as a buffer between a synth position that you are able to create with the help of a chain link price feed. So just, just to explain it on a higher level, the architecture, there's DAI where the person who wants to earn passive income is. And on the other side, there is the leverage trader. Right. And depending upon the leverage trader's win or loss, the person who would be staking die would have really high profits. Right. And it's just that it's, it's statistically backed as well that on an average, over long term, traders do lose on leverage and that essentially acts as, as the yield for the passive holder. So from liquidations? You can say liquidations or you can say losses as well. <laughs> Interesting, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a weird platform because in a way, you profit from your your user's demise. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting design because the users are free to choose. It's totally decentralized. So if, if users are willing to take that risk, uh, yeah, I mean, they can be the platform's guest. <laughs> Amazing. And so outside of um, leverage and, and yield farm, what's, what's happening just briefly on you guys are working on zero knowledge proofs, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, so this this was more on the DeFi side specifically. But if you talk about the blockchain technological side of things, yeah, zero knowledge uh, proofs is something we are extremely bullish upon. And, of course, we have heavily invested into that space as well. So for people who are not aware, uh, we have invested into two zero knowledge Ethereum scaling solutions. So first one is Hermes, uh, where, which we acquired around August uh, for a sum of around maybe 250 million Matic tokens, as far as I remember the exact price. And in December recently, we acquired a Mir protocol, which is also a zero knowledge based ETH scaling solution. And that that uh, acquisition uh, costed around six hundred million. Uh, yeah, I think we feel that the final final frontier of Ethereum scaling would be zero knowledge technology, and this is why we are we are not just talking about it, but uh, putting our money where our mouth is essentially. <laughs> Right, and, and you know, what are some concrete examples of how like DeFi users maybe, hopefully in the near future, might be able to use this? So from a user perspective, it would be just like the current EVM chain user experience. So similar to any L1 you have used, be it Avalanche, Phantom, or of course the Polygon POS chain, uh, the user experience would be pretty similar to that. 
it's just that on the settlement layer it would be truly decentralized as opposed to the current trade offs that current elvens uh, do have it would be truly decentralized as in the security would be totally dependent upon the ethereum base layer and zero knowledge uh, cryptography would be used to make sure that the transactions on the new chain uh, they are valid uh, there's no malicious intent there uh, yeah and and similar to hermes uh, mir would also be acting the same way uh, same evm experience for the developers and users alike so hermes is also already live though it's just that evm compatible version of hermes is not live but you can go and do swaps and transfers on a true layer 2 solution wherein you essentially don't have any any trust assumptions as compared to current l1 amazing and so okay so we've got some uh things things you guys are looking at this year um in terms of uh ensuring that yields can say um reasonably high uh zk proofs is there anything else that you're that's on the horizon for 2022 i think uh the major themes would be these two of course because we believe if if we can deliver on these uh i would say that we we have done quite a lot this year honestly because it's just that on these new technologies there's there's a phase release where you have a test net and then following it up through with a main net so these would be the major themes but yeah on on the micro side yeah we are talking up with a lot of institutions funds to bring more capital into defi bring more retail into defi and yeah i mean if we if we have created a system uh let everyone just participate in it in a truly decentralized manner right so what's what's that going to look like for for polygon bringing um you know some of these actors in i would say that from a user so i would say the impact would be on three sides so most of all it it would be really positive for the developers because lot of defi protocols need an initial tvl to just function let's say if it's if it's like a dex or even even like a leverage trading platform options whatever you do need a significant amount of tvl uh, such that people can easily buy without slippage or or even in some case people can just buy so i think till now we didn't have any big vcs so polygon when when the ascension started back in march and april even before that we never had a private say things like that we were public from nearly day one we had no major fundraises so i think the ecosystem applications had some difficulty initially uh because there were no big lps who could just because they had invested into the ecosystem they could just come in with a lot of tvl and on day one your platform has like maybe 100 million uh, or 50 million and hence making the protocol usable on day one i think lot of ecosystem protocols had to grow organically uh and that took a lot of time even even some of the protocols maybe took perhaps months to finally get a huge user base which i think honestly if if we had like these big funds and institutions rooting for us could have been done in like maybe one or two weeks and then once that initial bootstrapping is done we all know in defi the community catches up real quick and then there's a lot of organic activity that comes along it so i think from a developer perspective that changes a lot of things because you can essentially then bet that your protocol would be usable in in its early days itself that's interesting so you're kind of saying that um 
the you know institutional adoption of these products could actually um I, I mean, are you anticipating that it could kick off another kind of wave of um, DeFi summer, if you want to put it that way? So I would say that DeFi summer, <laughs> as much as we would love it to arrive once again, uh, that may be somewhat difficult uh, to achieve. But the protocols would be more usable. Uh, there would mm. be more organic activity. That's that I could I could definitely say because uh, for DeFi summer you have to like maybe have a crazy bull market <laughs> price pump of like maybe ten x in in one to two months, uh, and that I would say depends a lot on the macro crypto conditions rather than some funds uh, coming in the ecosystem. Right, but you're talking more about the the sort of base liquidity of the ecosystem and yes, um, yes, 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 and, and the sustainability, right? Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yes, yes. Uh, well, yeah, you know, um, so yeah, as I was saying, um, yeah, definitely excited to see some of these things rolled out um, this year, uh, and and definitely equally excited to to build some some new products together. Um, you know, at this point, um, I'd like to kind of open up the floor for questions for. Um, you know, regarding um, collaborations between StakeDAO and Polygon. Also, you know, if you're just curious um, to address questions to us, if that's also okay, um, you know, this space is kind of um, the idea is just to give our partners an opportunity to um, to showcase and, and, and kind of talk about some of the things that they're excited. Um, so, yeah, um, at that point, you know, please feel free to um, raise your hand and we will grant you access to speak. Yeah, sure. Uh, any questions you have around the ecosystem state of Go ahead. I think one more point. Oh, is there anyone else? Yeah, it's okay. We can, you know, we can continue the discussion, and then, um, you know, as people want to ask, they they can raise their hand. Yeah, sure. I think this there's one more thing that is not currently being addressed in DeFi that there's almost so much emissions right now uh, that people are not thinking long term and. As I said earlier, there's only so much emissions you can do. And because there are so high emissions right now, you can essentially create strategies that are not that complex right now. So you see a lot of strategies, a lot of yield aggregators, which take your LP token and then just run that strategy wherein you stake the LP token, you get the rewards, then you sell the rewards, uh, buy more tokens, then get more LP tokens, and then keep on increasing the APY. So I think as emissions start lowering, these strategies will not give a yield that is that is like three digits. And it may even compress to something in low double digits. So the competition for creating strategies was would also keep on increasing now day by day and i think this fact is not addressed till now so builders would have to create more more complex strategies that are difficult to execute from every point of view from from capital efficiency point of view you'll have to keep on lowering capital efficiency to get higher yield you maybe have to leverage as a part of your own strategy, which currently does not happen. You have to include other, maybe even centralized sources for getting yields. So in in such an environment, I feel that the existing builders would be building better strategies uh, than the new entrants because the new entrants in that time would be would have to catch up with 
with the existing ones which in itself if you think about it are are significantly complex right let's 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 i think that addresses a lot of interesting um maybe concerns or questions people have um within defi about uh, you know how long these kind of yields can last right so um just so i understand you correctly just to summarize your point um you're saying that um with the you know sus- the sustainability question of current protocol inflations um you're saying that as a whole you know um players like stake dow um you know and other players out there are going to have to build more kind of structured products or complex um solutions to to find the yield yes 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 absolutely so i think uh our defi team also collaborated with another builder uh so wherein we we wanted to create a strategy that was more complex than the existing lp token mining ones so in as part of that uh your collateral is essentially used to if 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 you have heard about chido protocol that is sort of maker for polygon right so as a mid level step uh, that strategy used chido essentially to then create a leverage position by minting their stable coin called mai uh and then the vault also dynamically rebalances the position such that the collateral ratio does not fall beneath a certain level so that essentially gives people the emissions from in form of their chi tokens as well so you you are getting like three three distinct sources of yields wherein you are getting ave yield balancer yield uh and their native token as well uh chi So I think things like these would be more common in the coming months in the coming days wherein something like this is extremely rare and nowadays I can I can maybe share the link for the vault as well people want to go and read about the documentation it's a it's a really interesting one Yeah yeah no that I think that that is a um a good point and um inevitably yeah, like the the complexity of of um of solutions is is only going to increase you know i think like maybe it's not strictly on the on the yield side but like an interesting example is is like uh the option strategies that we run um at stake down um yes 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 that as well i was i was going to talk about that next <laughs> yeah 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 i mean so obviously you know um i think to my knowledge you know we're the only protocol um in the option space that is running um so you have your your yield each week from the premiums so you know the vault say the vault has 1000 ether in it on the eth covered call strategy um you know every week this vault sells the the options to market makers via via open um and so all of that premium is getting captured as yield but um also as an additional source of yield to to produce a higher overall yield you know we have work and collateral as well so everything uh in that vault is actually held in the passive eth strategy um you know i think that's a kind of uh, interesting example of a structured product within defi that you know will probably these these are the types of initiatives that you're talking about right isy Yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, and and for people who are here, uh, who maybe have not read more about this strategy, would would definitely suggest reading more on this. And and if you can maybe share docs uh, with the people here, uh, that would be great. Uh, so just just for people who are not aware, basically. stake the offers these products these structured products that from a user perspective acts just like a vault just like a vault where you deposit your collateral 
and you get a certain APY. But on the back end, it uses the collateral to sell premiums on the options. And basically, if, if there's a certain strike price that is not hit, you you get to keep that premium. And that basically ends up as as uh, being your yield. Now, the nine, downside for that is that if, if there's a price such that uh, your strike price is crossed upon, you lose the upside. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean that's, that's the amount of risk you'll have to take to earn the yield. Uh, but yeah, definitely would suggest reading on that. Yeah, no, we do, we do get a good uh, a good lot of questions around um, you know the risk side. I think you know the um, the aspect there is that we work you know the strike price selection is is pretty conservative, um, and you know I think overall over across the um, the whole um, offering of of options vaults, we've only had one or two. Um, I think two. Um, individual strategy weeks where the options have expired um, in the money. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, you, you know, and, uh, yeah, good, yeah, sorry, good, good. Yeah, good. yeah, no, I was just, I was just going to say that um, you know, obviously, the idea there is that um, the the overall yield um, of the, of the vault is kind of the idea is that we target a high enough APY that um, as long as you stay in the vault for um, you know. Uh, a certain amount of weeks, then the that'll offset um, that risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in fact, in fact, when when this product started, I was I was a bit uh, skeptical on this one because I just felt that one of these days they they will start losing on the yield, and then the annualized yield would be probably something really low, or maybe even negative, but. Quite surprisingly, it almost it almost happens quite rarely. I mean, I I cannot remember uh, one week, uh, maybe maybe one or two when it happened. Uh, and yeah, I was just wondering. I mean, who are these other people who are buying the other side of trade if they are <laughs> losing every week? <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know. Um, but I'm yeah, sure I mean, I mean, we are getting the yield, so yeah, you can buy it. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I think you know a lot of the um, the buy side is is probably hedging, um, you know, for institutional trading yeah, values, yeah. etc. Et um, you know, that's options are a pretty big part of that 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 ecosystem. And I would say that these worlds could potentially be set up for much more assets so right now they are only being served for eth and btc but you can you right, can right. almost count any any asset that has like maybe market gap of 100 million i think you can potentially create good strategies around that product because such products do have option buyers it's what i've heard from from market makers for options yeah, I mean, on that note, I think a, a pretty um, a pretty interesting one would be Matic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, curious to know, like, how you know how else are you seeing um, the ecosystem maturing beyond um, you know vaults becoming more complex in their in their sources of yield and their strategies. Uh, apart from that, I would say that with Ethereum 2.0, uh, there could potentially be a great increase in the usage of all these liquid staking solutions. So if you talk about something like Lido, uh, I think things like Lido can can be extremely important in coming years because that essentially gives you a lot of yield so you have this one source of yield which is letting you earn base apy of of 
I think on ETH you can earn around five percent. On Polygon, Lido is also building, so you can get like yields of fifteen percent. You'll get a mint synth asset called Estimatic, similar to ST ETH, but Lido will mint. So you've got an asset that is already earning like fifteen percent, and then you can use that asset for generating more yield. So maybe you can use that asset in DEXs, uh, be an LP, or maybe leverage upon using Aave or Cheeto, things like that. So your yield all of a sudden from fifteen percent is like maybe extra thirty percent, so maybe like forty five percent. And what that does is that people who were earlier really hesitant to buy these crypto assets uh, because they were maybe on only offering fifteen percent and there's so much volatility that people were not comfortable. I think all of a sudden, when you have like three x yield, I think more people would be comfortable in getting exposure to these assets, these proof of stake assets. And I think that can be one major theme. uh in coming months i would say right yeah the um the so yeah okay so the expansion of the eth2 kind of ecosystem um on polygon is what you're looking for yeah i mean eth2.0 but apart from that of course eth2.0 so you will have a lot of st eth which can be used across ecosystem right mm. but yeah. even for matic you will have the stmatic version which you can use across in the whole ecosystem use that stmatic in quickshop stake dao aave uniswap whatever yeah. incredible um well yeah i think uh you know we've we've kind of covered touched on um a few important kind of topics for the year um so yeah just you know kind of recapping um We, we, you know, the 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 kind of thing, some of the, a couple of the ideas you touched on. So, um, the overall theme of of this year you're you're looking for is is you know, um, yield uh, yield vaults becoming increasingly complex, um, and also um, the expansion of um, ETH two and some of the other things you've mentioned within um, on on top of Polygon. Super excited for that. Um, you know. I think ZK solutions. You missed the ZK thing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, zero knowledge proofs as well, um, which you guys are actively working on. Um, you know, we're really excited to to build out some of these um, more kind of structured products together uh, this year, and you know, hopefully we can get get you that um, Matic covered call vault as well. Uh, that would be that would be very exciting. Yeah, um, absolutely. Would love it. Yeah, but. You know, thank thanks a lot for coming on today, Asif. Um, you know, really impressed with what you guys are doing at Polygon. Um, you know, I think everyone in the everyone in the ecosystem is kind of almost universally a fan of Polygon. Um, you know, and we're very lucky to have you um, as a as a thank you, thank as you. Uh, built again. You are too kind. Uh, those were some extremely kind words, <laughs> but thank you, thank you for having me today. Yeah, thanks a lot, Asif. And um, yeah, we will share a, a few kind of follow up links and and um, and talking points from this this call with the community as well. Yeah, sure. Looking forward. And uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for everyone who's joined today. Yeah, yeah and Cheers. and just a one small note from my side. So, yeah, if, if there's a, any builders listening. Uh, Want to get in touch? Uh, yeah, just feel free to DM me. Awesome, thanks so much. And uh, yeah, guys, Thank if you, you have any, you, uh, if you have any kind of uh, ideas or you know products ventures you'd like to see us build together, you know, um, just hit us up on Twitter. We'll always be there um, around and and attentive to your ideas. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Looking forward. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Asif. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.